By sharing my approach, my hope is that you'll take away at least a couple of ideas to incorporate into your miter station design. And I'll also, I'll show you the current issue with my dust collection situation and how I solved it. So let's get started. The support tables on each side of the miter station are fitted with a T-track and a stick-on metal measuring tape, both of which are recessed to sit just below the surface. And I took my time when installing the stick-on measuring tape just to get it positioned just right so I can really trust and have confidence that just setting the stop block to the measured cut lead is good enough and I don't really feel the need to mark the workpiece. The support tables extend just a few inches over four feet from the saw blade on each side so I can easily support an eight foot workpiece. It's rare that I ever work with pieces longer than that, but if I do, I can always just add an extra support. The tabletops are three quarter inch birch plywood. The facer boards are solid birch with really no functional purpose other than just to cover up the exposed plywood edges and make it look a little bit better. The frame is made from two by fours with no support post on each end. Looks like it has wings. Actually, it makes me think of that karate kid pose. Well, I don't know, but aside from looking a little weird, there is a functional reason. By having no support posts on the ends adds flexibility and being able to store things under the tables like my planer or the drill press or whatever I want to use this space for in the future. For support, I just align these braces with the wall studs and it's pretty sturdy, like I think I could probably stand on it and it wouldn't budge. So about the dust collection, I use this section of hose from my pull cleaner attached to the miter saw dust port. It merges into a fairly wide dust collection chute that goes into a shop back below the saw. The shop vac turns on and off automatically with this really cool device. It's the same one I have on my workbench dust collection system that I discuss in a separate video. This device turns on the shop vac automatically when I power on the saw and turns off the shop vac a few seconds after the saw powers off. The on delay and the off delay are both programmable. Anyway, the problem is that even with the pull cleaner hose and the dust chute, sawdust still goes everywhere. And I use this workspace here next to the saw quite a bit. I often have my project plans or my cup of coffee sitting right here, which, well, you can see is just not a good situation. So I'm going to build a dust hood to see if I can contain some of the sawdust. I start by cutting three pieces of three quarter inch plywood to make a simple box frame. Using some drywall screws and some corner blocks, it's pretty straightforward to assemble it. And I set it in place just to make sure that I can still rotate the saw uh, to any compound miter setting. Using a piece of cardboard and some scissors, I cut out a template that I can use to create the front cover for the dust shroud. With the template placed on a piece of eighth inch plywood, I just trace the cutout. The lines are kind of messy, so I straighten them up with a square. And I use a jigsaw to cut it out. I want the front cover to be easily removable because when I want to cut any angles on the miter saw, I'll need to remove it. To make some simple keyholes, I just drilled two holes side by side, one small and one large, and it's pretty easy to take it on and off with these little keyholes. I finish it all with Danish oil, which isn't really necessary, but it makes it look nice and it matches the rest of my shop. Also, I removed the hose from the saw's dust collection port since most of the sawdust was bypassing it anyway, and that leaves the dust chute more open and hopefully a little bit more effective. And just to see how much of the sawdust is getting sucked down the chute into the vacuum, I put my camera back inside the dust hood while making a cut on the saw, and there seems to be a pretty good flow of dust down the chute. 
Just looking at it again in slow motion this time, you can see because the shop vac runs for a few seconds after the saw stops, it does a pretty good job of clearing the air inside the dust hood. Here from this view outside the dust hood looking in, you can see even though it doesn't contain all of the larger particulate, it does a pretty good job of containing the airborne stuff and clearing the air within a few seconds after the saw stops. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the new dust hood. Thanks so much for watching.